Hi everyone! Like many of you, I'm sure, I have a lot of smoke alarms in my home and I just replaced them because they were getting too old. Um, when I replaced them, I got curious. I know that they are interconnected with each other, so there's a special wire to that, uh, but some of my detectors are not just a smoke alarm. They are also capable of detecting carbon monoxide. So I was thinking, when the alarm uh, detects a condition, smoke or carbon monoxide, how do they communicate with each other and how do they know which type of uh, alarm it is? How do the alarm that detects the, the problem tells the other alarms what kind of problem it is? So today's video is about doing a bit of reverse engineering, trying to see exactly what type of signals go through the interconnection wires between all those smoke alarms. So obviously it's, go it's only going to apply to the first alert brand. Uh, you're not supposed to mix different type of or different brands of smoke alarms because the interconnection signals might be different. Um, also, this video is just for fun. Uh, don't start messing around with, around with your smoke detectors. Um, if you do open one, uh, discard it because you might have damaged it. Uh, so with that being said, uh, let's go to the bench and take a look. So the type of smoke alarm and carbon monoxide detector we're going to look at today is this type. Uh, it, it's able to detect both smoke and carbon monoxide. It's an ionization detector, which means that it has a small radioactive source inside. That's for the smoke detection. And for carbon monoxide, uh, it's typically an electrochemical sensor. To open this, it's relatively easy. You simply remove the base, like that. And then there are some tabs which you simply pop like this. And it's open. This is the radioactive source for the smoke detection. I'm just going not to mess with it because it could be a bit dangerous. I don't want to get contaminated or anything. Even if it's not a strong one, uh, let's be careful. This little thing here, it, it looks like a battery, but it's not a battery. It's actually an electrochemical sensor uh, which detects the carbon monoxide in the air. And on the back of the, the sensor, what we see is that we have the neutral connection, the line connection, and the wire of interest today is this one, the orange wire, the interconnect wire. So what we're going to try to do is to supply power uh, to the smoke alarm through the, the 9 volt battery connection, which is here on the PCB, and uh, try to somehow trigger the CO sensor here and then see what type of signal goes on the orange interconnect wire. So I did a little bit of prep work. Uh, first of all, I taped the smoke detector assembly uh, of this alarm because I want to trigger the CO alarm, not the smoke alarm. Uh, the other thing I did is that I soldered two wires which are connected to my oscilloscope on the interconnect wire and on the neutral, which based on what, what I'm seeing here should be uh, the reference, the, the, the ground for the, the, the signal. I also connected a uh, lab power supply to the 9 volts battery terminal here. And normally, uh, if I power up the alarm, it should work um, as if it was installed. I also removed the buzzer because if I, tri if I do trigger the alarm, I, I don't want anyone, a neighbor or someone to call 911. So instead of the, the buzzer, I put a small LED right there. And that yellow LED will be my signal to let me know that um, something is being detected by the alarm and something should be sent on the interconnect wire. And finally, I relocated the CO sensor uh, on the other side of the PCB uh, because I wanted it to be um, more easily accessible. So the problem uh, I have now is how do I trigger that sensor here? There are multiple ways to do it. Uh, there's probably an electrical way, but I don't want to dive too deep into the reverse engineering of that circuit. And these alarms normally have a lot of self-test features. So if I do something too obvious, it's probably going to go uh, into fault mode. And if it does, it might enter a mode where it just tells me that it has an internal defect and it might actually stop working and I might never be able to get anything on the interconnect wire. So I don't want to do anything too special to that alarm. I really want to simulate a CO alarm as if it was a real alarm so that I get the conditions which are exactly the same as if it was a real alarm. So what I've built is a test chamber. And that test chamber is simply a bottle of soda, which I cut, and I added a hole on the side for a lighter. 
And uh, basically the idea is simply to um, light a flame inside to use up all the available oxygen in the bottle. And because the, the flame is yellow, it's an incomplete combustion. So it's going to generate some CO, some carbon monoxide, hopefully enough to trigger the, the, the alarm. The flame is very, very yellow. Yeah, okay, no oxygen anymore. Flame was very yellow, which means uh, it's good. It, it means that a lot of CO is being generated. Now, the thing is, I have no idea how much, is, how much time it's going to take to trigger the alarm because um, these CO alarms have a delay to prevent false alarms. So it could be anything from a few minutes to a few hours. So I'm, what I'm going to do is regularly, I'm going to come back, see if I can light the flame because it, it, it's leaking a little bit. And if I can, I'm just going to continue using the oxygen and hopefully after some time, uh, maybe a few hours, I should get a CO alarm. And I'll come back as soon as I do. I have a signal on the yellow LED, which is located right there. You see it blinking? So that means that the alarm is trying to sound the buzzer. So now the question is, do we, do we have anything on the output? So let's take a look at the scope quickly and let's see if I can see a signal of any sort. Yep. So apparently we have a signal, let's stop the acquisition. We have a signal with a period of approximately three seconds, approximately, a bit less. And the duration of that signal looks to be maybe a third of a second or something like that. So that's the signal which is sent on the interconnect wire when we have a CO alarm condition. The voltage goes between zero obviously and five volts. Now that I have the information for the CO alarm, I'm going to try to do the opposite test. I'm going to test the smoke alarm function and see if the signal is different and what type of signal we get when we have a smoke alarm. Let's go. I removed the tape around the, the smoke detection chamber and I've put it instead on the CO sensor. And what I'm going to try to do is to generate an alarm uh, on, in there. Hopefully just um, the fumes from the flame should be enough to do that. So I didn't have much success with the, putting the flame. We see it, it's all black. Uh, I was hoping that the suit would be enough to trigger the, the, the detection, but it's definitely not working. So I'm going to burn a little bit of tape. Hopefully it will generate enough smoke uh, for the, the detector to register something. So I've put the tape on at the end of a small wire. I'm going to put it on fire and yeah, it's definitely generating some smoke. Yeah, it triggered. You can see the, the alarm here. Hopefully the, the rear one is not going to trigger. I'm going to open my window. Now that we have a smoke alarm condition, let's see what we have here. And what we have is a constant five volt signal. So now that we know what signal this smoke alarm is sending in both conditions, CO alarm and smoke alarm, I'm curious. Can I make the alarm send the signal by sending uh, this signal as if it was coming from another smoke alarm? And the way to do that, to test that, is to use my programmable power supply to generate the same type of signal that we've seen generated by this alarm. So I just set a configuration, a list on my Kisly programmable power supply. I will apply 0 volts for 2.7 seconds and 5 volts for 0.3 seconds. And this is what we saw for a carbon monoxide alarm. So I've now enabled my list into the uh, output of the power supply. So we see that uh, regularly we have 5 volts at the output and I'm simply going to connect that into the smoke alarm and see what happens. The black and red wires go to my power supply and the yellow and blue wires are coming from my other power supply, the programmable one, which is going to generate the signal which goes into the interconnect wire here. So as you see here, the LED is turned off, which means that the alarm is not detecting anything. Now I'm going to turn the power supply on, the one to generate the signal here, and we'll see if something is generated by that alarm. 
Yes, it took a few seconds, but this alarm has detected that another alarm, which is interconnected with this one, has detected carbon monoxide. So it is now sounding the pattern for carbon monoxide, as we see in the fast blinking, which means that it's, it would be a fast beep. Now what I'm going to do is to change the voltage generated by the primary power supply to a constant 5 volt voltage, as if another alarm was detecting smoke, and we'll see uh, if we get a different blinking pattern. And yes, we almost immediately have the blinking pattern, which you will probably recognize, which is the, the sound pattern for a smoke detection. So these alarms are connected in a very simple way. It's a very simple protocol. I believe that now we understand how it works, at least for this brand, which is first alert, and I believe BRK also has the same signaling. If, like me, you are curious to know how these smoke alarms were capable of communicating different type of smoke or carbon monoxide alarms over a single wire, and if you wanted to know if it was using a complex protocol or a simple one, well, I hope that video answers the question. I didn't find any uh, research on that on the internet, uh, so hopefully other will find it interesting. Uh, again, don't mess with uh, safety equipment like that. This video is just for fun, uh, just because I was curious, but I really don't encourage you to do anything uh, with a live installation uh, because it can really be dangerous. You, you don't want to risk uh, rendering your smoke or CO detection useless. With that being said, uh, I hope you enjoyed that video as usual and uh, see you soon for another video. Bye.